Whoa! Look, look, look at this. Look at this. Feel this. They're completely just floating yeah, they're just under in the skin. skin. My name is Jabrina, and my butt is making me flip out. Right now, we're gonna just see what I deal with on a daily. So if I sit wrong, if I do anything wrong, it just flips over. My butt looks like I have two balloons sitting back there, and it just looks like it doesn't belong. And this is why I don't do buttock implants. Buttock implants are just one way to make the butt bigger, especially in somebody who's really thin. And you can see that these implants are definitely not in the right spot. And if you wanted a butt, you gotta do either get the fat transfer or the implants. I didn't have the fat, I wanted the butt, I got the implants. There is some truth here. If you wanna surgically enlarge your buttocks, the two main options are injections of fat. So you take fat from, let's say, your hips or your tummy or your thighs, inject that into your buttocks called a Brazilian butt lift, or you can use a solid silicone implant. I'm not a fan of either technique because each one comes with a set of potential major problems. Two weeks after surgery, the swelling started to kind of go down and you could see the implant kind of on the side. It was like a, like a crease, but about a month and a half later, the implant flipped. There are so many issues that can happen with buttock implants. The first thing is that part of the body is not necessarily considered clean. So you've got a high risk of infection. The other thing, as you're seeing here, is that those implants, they can shift, they can move out of place because you're sitting on them so much. And then the final thing, you know, if you've ever seen an episode of Seinfeld where George Costanza has this huge overstuffed wallet, can you imagine sitting on something like that? every day for the rest of your life does not sound like a very appealing option for me. After that, my butt implants would just flip four or five times a week. It's very uncomfortable, like it hurts. I go back to the doctor and this man tells me we could pull the implant up, stitch it to where it won't move, and do the, <laughs> the lipo to lift it and make it look a little better. Buttock implants typically are textured implants that are made to basically just stay in place. And if they have moved out of place like her situation, there's a good chance that maybe the surgery wasn't done right or the buttock implants aren't in the right position. Either way, doing some sutures and some lipo, it's very unlikely to correct this situation. Okay, Jabrina, stand up and let's just have a look to see what it looks like in person. So is it, it's the left one that flips, yes? This one, you wanna see it flip? Can you do it real fast? Whoa! Whoa. Look, 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 at this. look at this. Feel this, they're completely just floating yeah, they're just under in the skin. This is a major problem because buttock implants are shaped with a front or a top and a bottom. So if you've got a buttock implant that is flipping over, now what they're doing is they're feeling this edge of it. It's not like a breast implant where it's soft. This is solid silicone and it has to sit in a certain position. Otherwise, if it goes upside down, it's going to look really odd and that's what we're seeing here. We have to find a solution. So we have to take the implants out. I don't do butt implants anymore. Buttock implant surgery is relatively uncommon. Much more common is fat injections to the buttocks, and that's something that I used to do in my practice. Up until a couple years ago, we found out that that operation, the Brazilian butt lift, has the highest mortality rate in all of cosmetic surgery. Literally one in 3,000 women or men who undergo Brazilian butt lift surgery die from the operation, according to a recent survey. What are we gonna do with all that loose skin and the lack of projection? Traditionally, what we've done is make an incision across the lower portion of the back, lift the buttock up, and try as much as possible to get you some kind of buttock shape. Dr. Dubrow is describing essentially a buttock lift, and this is a surgery that's done uh, usually in people who've lost a lot of weight where you literally make an incision, right, kind of a curving incision at the top of the buttocks, and you remove skin from the top of the buttocks as a way to lift up the butt. The problem with this operation is it gives a long scar basically all the way across the top of your buttock and the lower back. 
For Jabrina's surgery, I will make an incision at the top of each buttock and remove her current implants. I will then make an incision across her back and then another incision about three inches below and remove the skin in between, leaving the underlying tissue. I will then create two flaps out of fat tissue and rotate them down into the existing pockets. Finally, I'll perform a buttock lift by pulling the skin up and stitching it to the higher incision. In addition to performing that buttock lift, he's also going to be performing auto augmentation of the buttock, meaning what he's going to do is take some of that tissue then from the top of the buttocks or the bottom of the back and rotate that tissue down. The problem in somebody like her though is she's really, really thin and is there enough tissue to truly auto augment her butt or is it really just going to not do a whole lot? This episode is brought to you by my skincare line, Yoon Beauty. Our products combine natural and organic ingredients with the latest in scientifically proven anti-aging components like vitamin C and retinol. So if you're looking for healthy and youthful skin without the unnecessary chemicals, this is the skincare line for you. Check them out at dryoononline.com and use the coupon code 20OFF to get $20 off your first order over $99. We'll put a link in the caption below. All right, back to the video. But, oh, look at that fluid. The pocket's so big and the implant's been moving around for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's culture this. All right. Watching this, makes me very, very concerned. Now, the first thing is that this fluid, it's kind of gross looking. Is there a potential risk that she's having an infection there, some type of an abscess? The second thing is the fluid could be just reactionary fluid. You can get that in rare cases with any type of implant put into the body. But the third thing that worries me is if you've got a textured surface implant and you've got a seroma or a fluid collection around it, that could be a sign of a very rare type of cancer called anaplastic large cell lymphoma. I only know of one confirmed case with a buttock implant of a person who developed this, but this is something that we are seeing with textured breast implants. Let's see what type of implant is pulled out. If this is a smooth implant, then the risk of cancer is probably pretty much close to zero. But if it's a textured implant, then what I would recommend would be removal of all of the capsule or the scar tissue around it and sending that to a pathologist to make sure that there's not cancer here. Wow, that's a big ass implant. Oh. That is a textured implant and so there is definitely a risk of ALCL, anaplastic large cell lymphoma in this situation. Uh, so that's a one main concern. And the other thing is, did you see when that implant and all that fluid's removed, how her buttock completely deflated? This is something we see when we remove breast implants as well. How am I gonna get enough tissue from such a thin girl to fill out that pocket and give her a good cosmetic result? So what you essentially have is this massive skin envelope that has deflated and there's nothing inside of it. Now the thing that I would think of first would be to take fat from anywhere else in the body and to try to inject it into that area to see if you can fill it in. The problem with her is, is she's real thin and there's not a whole lot to take out. And so hopefully the auto augmentation procedure that he's talking about may be able to help. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Huh? It's good projection. Just green has got back, 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 back. That's green enough. Got ba -ba. I gotta hand it to Dr. Dubrow. This is a real cool way to use the patient's own tissue to auto augment the buttocks and give the buttocks a much nicer shape. The question is gonna be, how's it gonna look like with this tissue and is it enough to fill out her buttocks like she wants? Hey, Jabri, hey, how are you? Hi. Wow, the asymmetry's starting to go away. Yeah, it's nice. looking a lot better. I mean, this really did go down. Remember we saw her? That was perfect. Now you can see that she does have a scar at the top of her buttocks. That scar is permanent. It will never disappear. So tonight, I get to put on my nice fitted dress. I finally get to, you know, show everybody what Dr. Dubrow did. And they're gonna be amazed. Since the surgery, I feel confident and happy. I don't have to hide and, and put on layers of clothing anymore. I don't have anything in my butt to make it flip. No discomfort, no pain. It's just me and my booty. 
Before my surgery, I had a saggy butt and the implants were flipping. But now, thanks to Dr. Dubrow, I am finally free of my honk butt. And now I finally have that cute tube butt that I've always wanted. Kudos to Dr. Dubrow. He took what is essentially one of the most difficult scenarios in plastic surgery and got, I think, a reasonable improvement for her. Well, did you enjoy that reaction to botched? Well, if you did, I have an entire playlist of botched reactions. And some of these botched operations that they're fixing will blow your mind. Take a peek at it right up here where I react to multiple episodes of botched in this playlist. And remember, Eat real food, use clean skincare, and always consider actual plastic surgery as a last resort.